Hi, hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kat, and today we are going to be doing a good old fashioned book haul. So I've tried to gather like all of the books that I've probably hauled this year. I've tried to leave out books that I've talked about a lot or that I've hauled in other videos. But yes, there is a lot. You probably saw in the thumbnail, there is a lot. I didn't count how many, but I might count them after I do this video and put it in the title of the video. So you guys will probably know before I do. So yeah, I'm so excited to talk through all of these books with you, why I got them, why I'm excited about them. Some of them I've already read, so I can maybe share some of my thoughts. And but yeah, let's just get straight into it. I'm gonna be picking these at random there's no kind of order to this i kind of just put them all in a random pile and i'm gonna go through them like that so yes let's start with the first book this is gonna be a tongue twist already so <laughs> the first book that i've pulled this year is the every man's library pocket poets and it's everly dickinson i scoured the internet for this i tried to find this in all of my local bookstores and I just couldn't. And then one day I was at my parents' local bookstore and I saw this kind of sticking out on the shelf and I was like, I know that color because I've been completely obsessed with trying to find this. It's just a little pocket version of Emily Dickinson's poetry. It's definitely like not all of her poems. Obviously everybody's seen that big purple brick that I do want to get eventually, but I thought that I would like dip my toe in, see if I still like it. I studied her at A-level, but I don't know if I'll still get on with her poetry just because it's been like, what, seven years now since I read one of her poems. So yeah. By the way, before I really get into the haul, I'd love you guys to let me know which books I should prioritize, which books you think I would love, or obviously which books you've loved. I would really like to know from the books that I haven't read yet, which ones you guys think I should read first. Let's go with another poetry book. So this is Honorifics by Cynthia Miller, who is a Malaysian poet. It says on the cover that this has been shortlisted for the Forward Prize of Best First Collection. And it says on the back that Honorifics is an, oh my God, do you mind? I'm talking about poetry here. Honor FX is an astonishing, adventurous, and innovative exploration of family, Malaysian Chinese cultural identity, and immigration. From jellyfish blooms to glitch art and distant stars, taking in Greek gods, space shuttles, and wedding China along the way, Miller's mesmerizing approach is experimental, luscious, and expansive with longing. I started reading this with my mum, and it honestly is gonna be a challenge for me. It's definitely out of my comfort zone in terms of poetry. So yeah, I know that I'm gonna enjoy reading this and that it's gonna be an exercise for my mind and my brain. Okay, let's move on to another collection, but in a completely different way. So this is my Jane Austen collection. I finally completed my collection of these editions of her books. Um, oh, <sighs> she's okay. All right, these are her like six major works that I am supposed to be reading alongside Caitlin's patrons. I started Sense and Sensibility and honestly couldn't really get into it at the time. I'm definitely going to persist though. I'm going to keep trying and I just know that I'm going to love Pride and Prejudice because I did read like a third of it when I was a bit younger and I think I'd just appreciate it so much more now. I just don't think there's any more stunning editions of her books than these. Like you can tell me if I'm wrong but like... Moving on to a couple of books I've actually read in the last week or so. The first is Lonely Castle in the Mirror by Mizuki Sujimura. This book I gave 4.5 stars because I loved it so much. I did talk about all my thoughts in a recent vlog, so I'm not really gonna go too in depth, but it's about this group of lonely teenagers who escape their lives and their realities into this beautiful like magical fantasy castle and it's about the friendships that they make and there are a lot of plot twists that I was there for the ride. I love the writing, I think this is probably my favourite translated fiction that I've ever read and yeah I just think it's an absolutely beautiful edition as well. I've got a lot of favourite quotes and yeah I just encourage everybody to pick this up to be honest if you like the sound of it. So another book that I've read recently is Other People's Clothes by Carla Henkel and this was my Patreon buddy read for May. I ended up giving it three and a half out of five stars and I thought it was so interesting. I recently made a post sharing all of my favourite quotes from this book and there are a lot because the writing for a debut is fantastic. It's a thriller set in Berlin but it's so much more than that. It's like a character study of these two girls living it up in Berlin but also really going through it. It was definitely the perfect book for a buddy read because there was so much to discuss, so much to go into. I am also going to Berlin very very soon so this really got me in the mood to travel there but also made me really scared as well. The next couple of books are manga that I got recently and those are Orange Volume 1 and 2, The Complete Collections, which 
are very gorgeous. They are also bricks, but I think there's like six volumes within these two books. Wow. I am so ridiculously excited to get back into manga with these books. I've only read the first volume, but I gave that five stars and I can't wait to get into it, get into the romance, get into the mystery element. I just know I'm going to love these and they came highly recommended from some of my favourite people on booktube. I'm pretty much just crouching now, but why don't we go with books that I've been sent by publishers recently? Oh my god, I almost forgot my tea. That would have been a nightmare literally tea is life like life juice like i can feel myself get like revitalized and aged down so starting with meg rossoff's friends like these which is her second ya book i think she's written children's books which i didn't know about until caitlin told me recently um, but yeah this is her second book that i will be reading it's about a small town girl moving to new york moving to the big city and making friends with these people that she starts an internship with i think it's about this girl basically facing this really harsh reality and going through a bunch of first first love and all of that when i was really ill a few weeks ago started reading and i got to chapter four which is not very far it was almost like a fever dream like i was so hot and like feverish that i feel like i imagined reading this so i'll probably have to start it again to get the full effect i feel like everybody should just read meg rossoff like the great gordon is one of my favorite books of last year. I couldn't be more excited to have received an arc of this one. Another arc that I received recently that came so beautifully packaged, like there was a bow, there was chocolate, like vegan chocolate, oh my god, is <laughs> The Girls Are All So Nice Here by Laurie Elizabeth Flynn. This one's been likened to like The Secret History and a bunch of other like really famous works and I honestly don't think it's gonna live up to that. I think the marketing team is just going like ham, like trying to hype this book up. I'm not gonna get my hopes up but I am still really excited for this one. When Ambrosia arrives at prestigious Collis Wesleyan. What? She's desperate to fit in, but at first, Am struggles to navigate the rules of this strange elite world filled with beautiful and privileged nice girls until she meets the charismatic Sully, and the two quickly form an obsessive, destructive friendship. Intoxicated by Sully's charm and determined to impress her, Am finds herself drawn deep into her new best friend's dangerous manipulations. But if she wants to play Sally at her own game, Am has no idea just how high the cost will be because sometimes nice girls can do bad things. I just think that sounds so fun. I feel like it's just been ages since I read a like nice dark but fun dark academia school vibe book. I am a bit worried because Ali Reynolds, who wrote like one of the worst books of all time, Shiver, got a quote on the back. Well, I hope it's not anything like her book because <laughs> I freaking hated that. One that I got at the beginning of the year, which I still haven't read, but I'm still really intrigued by is the last one by Fatima Diaz. Pretty cool, different cover. I love that. It looks like tea stains or coffee stains. <laughs> This book follows the youngest daughter of Algerian immigrants, Fatima. She's raised in a home where love and sexuality are considered taboo and signs of affection avoided. And basically she lives in a majority Muslim area of France or like just outside of Paris, I think. And she spends three hours a day on the train commuting into Paris. I think she ends up developing feelings for this girl, Nina. And it says she grapples more directly with her attraction to women and how it fits with her religion, which she continues to practice. So I think this is going to be a really super interesting read. I might actually read this on the train and like plane journey to and from Berlin, which would be really nice because it's a really short book as well. And what's really exciting about it is that it's written in verse. Ever since I read Here is a Beehive, I've been so excited to read books written in this format, which is going to lead me on to my next book, The Poet by Louisa Reed. This is another book written in verse, which I'm really excited about. I already started reading the beginning of it and the publisher sent me some cute goodies with it. So I've got like a kind of little, almost like a postcard thing and a cute bookmark with a quote on it. The quote says, I believe every word you say, that was always my mistake. And on the spine, it has another quote how good you are at betrayal. Anyway, yeah, this seems to be likened to Acts of Desperation and also Here is the Beehive. So I just know that I'm gonna like it. That seems to be my like preferred genre at the moment, like women in their twenties, like going through it, dealing with relationships, their mental health and stuff like that. Like I just seem to lap that up for some reason. I think this one also deals with a age gap relationship that is really manipulative. And it's also described as a page turning tale of female solidarity and survival. So yeah, definitely gonna be some interesting themes in this one and I can't wait to read it. I think I'm gonna read it very, very soon. Yeah, maybe I should read these both in Berlin. 
I don't know, let me know what you think. The next book a publisher sent me is The House of Soaring Stars by Beth Cartwright. This one's already come out, hence the fact that it's in hardcover. But I think that I will probably get to it soon because I'm getting back into this kind of fantastical writing. It's a spellbinding and haunting literary fable of loss perfect for fans of The Binding and The Night Circus. A beautiful fairy tale of a book with the most delicious prose. I feel like I just want another book kind of like Lonely Castle in the Mirror and I think this one will probably deliver that. Alone on an island surrounded by flowers that shine as dusk begins to fall sits an old faded house. Rooms cannot be rented here and visits are only for those haunted by the memory of loss. Hello. That literally sounds like a combination between like Gallant, The Starless Sea, and Lonely Castle on the Mara. Like that just sounds beautiful and I just haven't seen enough people talk about this. So yeah, I'm kind of going into this a little bit blind. I don't know what to expect, but I'm excited. Are you ready for me to talk about a book that I'm just so shocked and gobsmacked that I haven't read yet? Because I am not. <laughs> anyway, that is Woman Eating by Claire Coda. I am ashamed that I haven't read this yet because this just sounds so good. I literally got it at the beginning of spring and it came out at the end of March shame like i literally feel shame this is like a modern vampire story but like set in our world like it's a contemporary vampire story it just sounds so good so it's about lydia who is a vampire living in london it sounds like she's trying to move away from her mum who is also a vampire and kind of just like have a normal life uh, but I think her vampire tendencies kind of get in the way of that and it just sounds so funny. If Lydia is to find a way to exist in the world, she must reconcile the conflicts within her, between her demon and human size, her mixed ethnic heritage and her relationship with food and in turn humans before any of this. However, she must eat what the heck am I doing not reading this while it's in my possession at the table by Claire Powell seems to be like perfect for fans of Sally Rooney it's about this family who are going through it the parents are getting a divorce and it's about how I think the daughter kind of reacts to that news I think it kind of just changes everything about her life to Nicole and Jamie their parents seem the ideal couple a suburban double act happily married for more than 30 years so when Linda and Jerry announce they've decided to separate the news sends shockwaves through the siblings lives forcing them to confront their own expectations and desires Claire Powell's brilliantly observed debut novel follows each member of the Maguire family over a tumultuous year of lunches dinners and drinks as old conflicts re-emerge and relationships shift in unexpected ways also the cover's so fun this next Next book is the arc that I've received most recently and that is Briefly A Delicious Life by Nell Stevens. I am kind of going out of my comfort zone with this one just because it's historical fiction and I don't tend to always love those but I decided to request this one nonetheless and that is because it's also a ghost story. So it's about this ghost, the ghost of a girl, who's been trapped in this one place for like hundreds of years and then this couple who I believe are based on actually like real people like a composer and his like wife or like partner, they move to the town where this ghost is and I think the ghost ends up falling for the woman so this is supposed to be about yearning love and the surprising consequences of one woman wearing a suit but yeah I don't know it just sounded too interesting to pass up and I'm just very excited to read something out of my comfort zone for once the actual cover of this one is so gorgeous I'll put it on screen because it's so beautiful the last book that I got sent from a publisher is really quite special it's Time is a Mother by Ocean Vuong and I know that everyone who's read it so far has really fallen in love with it just like they did with his first poetry collection which I also got recently which is Night Sky with Exit Wounds I'm so excited to dedicate some time to these two and just explore this person's mind apparently he's just got some very interesting things to say in a very beautiful way so yeah we're getting towards the end of the haul but we've still got some left so yeah again I'm just gonna pick some of these randomly starting with A Touch of Ruin by Scarlet St. Clair so this one is the second book in the Touch of Darkness series I think it's called that it's the Hades and Persephone love story this is the second book but apparently it's not as good like nowhere near as good as the first one. Ooh, there's always really good chapter page art but yeah I just thought that would carry on reading the series see if I like it see if I'm into it I really like the first book I thought it was so much fun so even if this one's not like technically as good of a story I feel like I'll still enjoy being with the characters so another fantasy book is Book of Night by Holly Black this is the Waterstone special edition and I'm very lucky because it's signed by Holly Black herself so I'm really interested to see what this is about all I know is what my patrons have told me which is that it's about controlling shadows or like magic that controls shadows 
shadows but i think one of the characters doesn't have a shadow like that's literally all i know about it and it was intriguing enough for me to pre-order this copy i will definitely be reading this in the month of june because it's the book club pick for jodie's patron i'm very much looking forward to reading this with her patrons but first i will be reading the Cruel Prince. I recently got this because I realised that I wanted to read her YA series, um, what's it called? The Folk of the Air series before going on to Book of Night or at least read the first book. So I'm probably going to read The Cruel Prince. I've actually already started it but I'm going to finish this book and then I think I'm going to go on to Book of Night and then I'll continue on in this series. That's kind of the plan. I'm definitely liking it so far. I just want to see what the hype is about because this is one of the most hyped teen fantasy series there is. So yeah, I'm really excited to be able to actually finally like talk to my friends about this one because like everybody's read it. So we're at the final five books. Okay, let's go with the one non-fiction on this list. Marilyn Monroe, Private and Undisclosed by Michelle Morgan. Oh my god, M, M and M, M. That's kind of iconic. I really wanted to pick up a biography of someone's life and I was just thinking about people that I would like to learn more about and I thought of Audrey Hepburn but I feel like I know so much about her because I used to be obsessed with her and I looked into a lot of her life and I've gone to like exhibitions completely about her and like watch documentaries and stuff but Marilyn Monroe is more of a mystery to me so I looked into which biography to read because there are obviously loads. This is one of the only ones written by a woman but also the main one that is sold in bookstores is apparently a book which actually started a lot of the lies and rumours about Marilyn in the first place. So there's no way I was going to get that one. It was also written by a man. But yeah, I thought that I would get one written by a woman, which includes like loads of interviews and research. There's a lot of input from people that Marilyn knew personally. And I just think that this is probably going to be the most accurate depiction of Marilyn's life in a book that I can get my hands on. I hope so anyway. Let me know if any of you have read this. And then hopefully I can probably get into some more biographies and just non-fiction in general because I'd really like to do that. A book that I got a few months ago is Curse Bunny by Bora Chung. I got this because it's shortlisted for the International Booker Prize. It didn't actually win, like the winner was announced literally last week. But yeah, it is on the shortlist and I really wanted to get into more Korean translated fiction. This one seemed to be the way to go for me because it's short horror stories that are a bit weird. Some of what these stories are about reminded me of Junji Ito's stories, like his mind. Yeah, there's literally one about a toilet and yeah, you don't really want to know. And yeah, I'm very excited. It's very beautiful. I've definitely been meaning to read a few of these at a time. I just feel like I really need to get in the right headspace to read something like this because all I've heard is that it's really messed up. <laughs> a book that I found recently when I was just like browsing in the bookstore and I've never actually seen before or come across is another short story collection and that is Wonderland. It's an anthology of works inspired by Alice's adventures in Wonderland and I really love the cover of this one. It's also really fun that I got this within the first month of my Patreon because my Patreon theme is Alice in Wonderland and all of my tears are themed that way. Our tea party live shows are Wonderland buddy read. So yeah I thought it was only fitting to pick this up when I saw it. All of the stories are very different like even in genre so some of them are horror stories, some of them are historical. So there's definitely probably going to be stories that I really love and stories I don't love so much in here I'm guessing but yeah I can't wait to read some of these and let you guys know what I think because it's definitely one that I haven't seen talked about okay the last two books that I got that prompted this video is because I purchased them yesterday when I was at work. The Swimmers by Chloe Lane and this is a debut novel from a Kiwi author. I really wanted the arc of this one. I can't remember if I requested it but I definitely didn't get it and then I saw it in the bookstore yesterday. I told myself that I would steer away from books like this. This is supposed to be really sad. The mother of the protagonist is dying of cancer. It seems like it could be a pretty like hard-hitting story basically so that's the sort of book that I would avoid at all costs. But no, I decided to pick this up because I saw a review on the Waterstones website saying this book is about a protagonist who avoids feeling things deeply at all costs and I was just like that is definitely me. That is like one of the major things I'd use to describe myself, avoiding feeling things deeply. I really want to kind of change that about myself and and I feel like reading something like this might really help me. I feel like I'll probably really relate. This character is basically forced to feel. So yeah, it seems like it's going to be a very confronting book. I feel like I'm ready for it. I think this is also going to be the first book that I read by a Kiwi author as well, set in New Zealand. So yeah, I'm very excited for that as well. So the last book in this haul 
haul is Insatiable by Daisy Buchanan and I've been looking at this on and off in the bookstore since it came out. It's literally been like a year or more. It just is so attention grabbing like the orange and like the picture. The tagline is a love story for greedy girls. Stuck in a dead end job, broken hearted, broke and estranged from her best friend. Violet's life is nothing like she thought it would be. She wants more, better friends, better sex, a better job and she wants it now. So when Lottie, who looks like the woman Violet wants to be when she grows up, offers Violet the chance to join her exciting startup, she bites. Only it soon becomes clear that Lottie and her husband Simon are not only inviting Violet into their company, they are also inviting her into their lives. Seduced by their townhouse, their expensive candles and their Friday night sex parties, Violet cannot tear herself away from Lottie, Simon or their friends. But is this really the more Violet yearns for? Will it grant her whatever it is she is so desperately seeking? I'm really excited to dive into this one. I think it's going to be kind of wild but also probably very relatable. It just seems like this is a young woman who wants it all and I can't wait to see how this plays out because it sounds, yeah, it sounds like something. So yeah, congratulations for reaching the end of the haul. Well done, honestly. Like, give yourself a round of applause because that was a very long haul. That's probably the longest haul I've ever done on my channel, wow. I pretty much told myself like a few months ago that I wouldn't do hauls anymore and that is probably why it's built up this much. So these books have come into my possession over the space of nearly half a year. It definitely looks like I buy a lot more books than I probably do. Like I said at the beginning of this video, please do let me know which ones I should bump up on my TBR, which ones I should prioritise. I think the last book that I talked about is probably one that I just want to pick up like ASAP. But yeah, let me know what you think. I'm really intrigued to know, especially if you've read some of these books. Like are any of them top tier, are any of them five stars for you? Otherwise, I hope that you found some new books to get excited for yourself. Maybe like me, you'll want to add some of these books to your TBR. So yeah, that's it from me. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye!